guys, this is Brayland's Gaming and Adventures, and today I'm back, and guys, what if you combined a Tuesday, like just a normal Tuesday, and something scary, then you will get terrible, terrifying Tuesday, and that is going to be what my new series is called, Terrible, Terrifying Tuesday, so yeah, this is the first thing I'm reacting to, so, yeah, let's get into it. All right, here you go. This happened when I was a kid. I was in the fifth grade, and my friend, uh, let's call him Ethan, invited me over to his place. He lived right by the ocean, and if you walked through the forest for half a mile, you'd reach a nice beach with a diving board. When I got to his house, we hung out, played video games, and talked. You know, typical kid stuff. Then we decided to go to the beach. It wasn't too far away, and we knew we could get back in time for dinner, so we set off. To make the trip more adventurous, we decided to bushwhack our own path. After walking a couple of minutes, we hit a tall fence. Crap, Ethan exclaimed. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we'll have to go back. Suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, I spotted something. The fence went about eight meters long, and then stopped. My jaw dropped. There was a house. It was an old cabin with boarded up windows. Oh no. The planks were falling off and you could see the old insulation underneath. It was gray in color and had flecks of blue paint. The fence led up to the side of the house, stopped and then continued on the other side. What scared me the most was that there was no road. I mean, not even a clearing to get to the road. You'd have to walk 20 minutes. Kevin, come on, Ethan yelled from behind me. Look at this, I shouted back. Ethan walked up to me, and his jaw dropped. There was no door, just a frame. And peering through the frame, we could see that there was a back door, also with no frame. Is it also with no frame? <laughs> that door actually has a frame. I looked at Ethan. Should we do it? I asked mm, him. Oh well. He shrugged. I don't see why not, he responded. Inside the house was dark. Why in the world would you walk through the house? You could go around it. You could literally, like, you could literally walk in, go like around the house, and then go to the beach. You do not have to walk through. Like the only way you you could walk through is that there was no way to go around it. But there was. But I'm pretty sure there was a way to go around it. So why in the world would you even walk into it? Oh no. The door. What was it? He said as soon as we got away. My whole body shook. I must be going mad, I thought to myself. Eventually, I explained it to him. As we reached the door, I wanted to take one last look at the house. I glanced up the stairs and I saw the shadowy outline of a person. All I could see were eyes. Oh no, 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 no. That face. Another route back home, and we told Ethan's mom. She laughed at us and said she'd been that way many times and there was no house. We were angry because she didn't believe us, so we got out our cameras and went back the next day. When we got there, there was no house. It was just gone. No clearing, nothing. To this day, Ethan and I still wonder what it was. No, 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 that face, that face. Oh, no. I suggested to Ethan a theory that scares me to this day. I had been reading about Russian folklore, and a page caught my attention. It was a story about a witch named Baba Yaga who had a moving house. She would eat naughty children, and parents used to use it to scare children. Was this a witch? No. Oh. Oh my goodness. No. Guys, that was terrifying. Alright. Wait, it says four animated horror stories. So, yeah. 
So yeah, guys. Um, I'll get back to you guys when the when this ad is over. All right. All right, guys. I'm back. I was in my early okay, here we go. This time. My family and I went on vacation in a village which had a forest rumored to be haunted. Oh there no. Was a cemetery oh forest. no. It was a little far away from the village, near a lake. We weren't actually supposed to go to that forest, but my cousins thought it would be fun to play hide and seek at night. We were given some rules. We weren't allowed to take our phones or flashlights with us. Oh. As planned. Goodness. We all met in front of our farmhouse at midnight. Me and my younger sister, who was seven years old at that time, were the youngest out of everyone. So my older cousin decided to help us hide. He was 22 at that time, and he wanted to make sure we didn't get lost. After we chose who was going to be the seeker, we huh. parted ways, trying to find the best hiding spot. This is a bad idea. So he took us to the cemetery. He said, she'll obviously be too afraid to enter the cemetery. I think this will be a best hiding spot for us. Although my younger sister kept telling us not to go there, we shut her off, telling her she was just a kid and would make us get caught. To this day, we wish we would have listened to her. See? It was getting darker. It was almost 2 a.m. Uh. Then all of a sudden, the cemetery lights went out. Oh, no, 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 no. This is creepy. We can only hear the sound of wind and stray dogs barking at the backside of the cemetery. Oh no. But then we heard digging noises. I still remember that horrifying sound. At a distance, we can see a Oh goodness. Mysterious girl in my house. Hi, my name is Alyssa, and I'm 15. A few months ago, something strange happened to me. Oh, goodness. To this day, I can't explain exactly what happened. I was relaxing at my house, doing some schoolwork on my laptop. Being home alone never bothered me until then. After about two hours of being alone, no, I normie to cream. <laughs> Oh goodness, no. And I always make sure they're locked when my parents leave. I decided it was the mailman and that he would set the package down and leave. Then I heard the bang again, but louder. I was confused, so I went to my dad's office since it had a window facing the front porch. The second I grabbed the door handle of his office, my parents' bedroom door slammed shut right next to me. Uh uh. Our air conditioning was broken at the time. So there was no way it could have been the air. I looked at the door, ran to the other side of the house, and called my mom to see if she was expecting anyone over. No, Alyssa, she said. And those two words made my heart beat faster than it ever has. My phone disconnected, and I started hearing footsteps coming towards me from down the hallway. Oh, the goodness, no. Living room. I knew I'd be out of sight, since I used to hide there as a child. I called my close friend, Emily. Who always knew how to calm me down in crazy situations. She told me to go and lock myself in my room. As she was talking, 
I started to hear doors open and slam shut along with footsteps, and the voice of a little girl saying, I'm going to find you, over and over. Oh, goodness, no. And when the noise stopped, I ran to my bedroom door. When I grabbed the handle and was about to go in, I heard it again. Uh-uh. The girl was in my room and said, Come here, Alyssa. I want to play. Come here. Those fingers. Oh, my gosh. I started to hear knocking on the bathroom door and the voice. Don't you want to play, Alyssa? We could have a lot of fun. That is, oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. Louder and louder. And then it started sounding like she, that thing, started to walk away, still laughing and knocking. Then I couldn't hear it anymore. My grandpa came into the house yelling, Alyssa, it's grandpa. You can come out. You're safe. I oh, ran as fast as I could to my, my grandpa. Gosh. Later on, I found out that after my phone cut out on my mom, she sent my grandpa to check on me. Once I told my grandpa that a little girl had gotten into the house, we went around the house searching for her, but we never found anything. All the windows and the doors were locked. The garage was closed up tight, and nothing was broken into. I hate being home alone now, and being in my room, but I've learned to deal. Oh, no. Guys, I don't care how tough you think you are. Nothing. Oh, my. Gosh, guys, that was crazy. All right, guys, after this um commercial ends, I'll get back to you. Here we go. My true horror story, story of socks. Of, of sock. When okay. I was about nine years old, I was in my swimsuit, ready to go to swimming lessons. My brother and I had made a pillow fort, and it was still there from the night before. I had crawled underneath the coffee table, where a blanket went over it, blocking out the outside world. I have no idea why I stuck my foot outside of the blanket, but I did. A dark black sock crawled creepily oh. the and slowly slid over it. The sock was cold, and I felt odd. I recognized the sock. It looked just like the one my mom had. I called out my mom's name and my brother's name, but there was no response. Oh. Only silence. I walked to the window, but when I looked out, there was nothing out of the ordinary. I saw my cat staring at me with a weird look on her face. Oh, goodness, no. When I heard the shower running upstairs. My mom was still in the shower, and my dad was at work. I ran up the stairs to find my brother spinning on the chair in my parents' room. I asked him if he went downstairs. And he told me he had nothing to do with the situation. Oh, goodness. Happened, but she didn't believe me. She said that I was probably hallucinating and that it was just the cat. <gasps> no! Saw, and the look on my cat's face is still fresh in my memory. Oh, my gosh. Why do all of these have to be so scary? Okay, okay, okay. Nope, nope. I cannot do another one. Alright. So, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe, click that notification bell so you never miss any of my brand new videos. So, yeah. Bye, guys!